Well, good for almost afternoon to everybody. Um, thanks for being here with us. Um, we are getting our technology um, going. And hopefully I don't um, click a button that makes anything um, stop. So anyway, we are happy to have everybody here today and happy to have Joe Doherty with the SSA to kind of walk us through our recently passed legislation. And we've also got Pete Whittingslow here with storageauctions.com. Um, he'll be available on chat if you've got if you guys have any questions um, for him. Um, we're gonna get started here in just a second. We're gonna let a few more people um, roll in. Looks like our numbers are steadily increasing. We had about 50 sign up for this today. Um, if you have any questions for Joe or Pete um, during the call or during the Zoom meeting, just um, feel free to use the chat function. And if they don't get to those during this, I'll make sure that they receive them um, afterwards. So hopefully they can get back to you then. So, um, So I guess with that, um, and also we want to say thanks to the storage group for putting this together um, for us so quickly. We really appreciate all that they do as far as partnering with us for technology and just helping us um, stay on top of communication with members and doing our awesome website. So um, with that, I'll go ahead and pass it over to Joe and he can, um, he can start for us. Great, thank you, Shelley. Appreciate the introduction and opportunity to speak to the members in Arkansas today. I was disappointed I didn't have a chance to see y'all in person a couple of weeks ago. I actually, Arkansas, I've, in my job, I get to travel around quite a bit, but for some reason I've never made it to Arkansas. It's one of about 10 states I've never been to. So maybe next year. But it's my pleasure today to present on the results of House Bill 1027, which uh, is really just, uh, as I call it here, a new day in, in Arkansas in finally getting rid of the newspaper advertising mandate for the state. And I, I think it, it's really um, important for me to emphasize that it was such a great effort by the Arkansas Self Storage Association and amazing testimony from the members of the association, members of the board, Shelley, uh, as well as others. Uh, Dan Lusk is somebody who really stood out to me in his testimony. Uh, I know several others testified in support of the bill as well. And that makes, and I know a lot of folks called their representatives and senators, that type of effort really goes a long way. And I think it made the difference to help these legislators understand that it, it, this legislation affects real people, it affects real business owners in, in the state of Arkansas, and it's not just the, uh, you know, the newspapers crying wolf and, and telling these legislators about how we're you know, such bad people and you know, we want to get rid of public notice and all these other lies that the newspapers like to tell. So great job to Shelley and the Arkansas board and uh, in, in getting this legislation passed. So with, with that, I'm gonna jump now to so what has not changed uh, before we start getting into what actually has changed. So a couple things here, what has not changed? There's no change to the timing of the sale. Minimum of 46 days in default, that was before this legislation was passed, that's still the case now. And I should also say this legislation we're talking about today, it is in effect now. So you can use this starting immediately uh, if you aren't already. Second, there's no change to the content of the advertisement. And I'll get uh, in a couple of slides here, I'll, I'll show you a couple of examples of, of advertisements that you can use. There's, uh, in Arkansas, really, there isn't a lot of uh, requirements or specificity around what is in the, the newspaper advertisement. 
or you really no longer a newspaper, just the advertisement. You still need to advertise as we'll get to, but you just don't need to do it in the newspaper. And I think the, the most important point that I think is something that really helped us win in this situation was, oh, and a lot of folks don't know this, the tenant's name is not required in the advertisement. So it really makes you wonder, well, what's the purpose of it? If it's not something where the tenant's name has to be in there and there could be this potential, oh, maybe the tenant reads their name in the paper or a friend of a friend reads it or whatever, the tenant's name isn't required. So none of that type of serendipity, I'll call it, is something that uh, the legislature had in mind when they initially passed this bill or passed this law, I should say. So the last two, no, change, no required changes to the default notice or rental agreement. You might want to let folks know that there is this option to advertise in the newspaper or outside of the newspaper in your rental agreement, but you don't have to do that. And then finally, uh, there's no change to the timing of the advertisement. Again, you're not going to advertise in newspapers anymore but you still need to advertise and that advertisement needs to occur at least seven days before the sale. So next here, uh, as I've said, the advertising is still required, but the newspaper component of it is optional now. So this is something I want everybody here to keep in mind. Get rid of the newspaper. I don't want you advertising in the paper anymore you can now advertise in any commercially reasonable manner. And we'll just break down in a second what that means. And as with newspaper advertising, you can charge your tenants for these other forms of advertising that we're talking about. So uh, if, there's, you know, if there's any fees or costs associated with that or your time associated with that, that is a fee that you can pass along to the tenant and I would encourage you, although the law doesn't say this, I strongly recommend and encourage you to make sure whatever it is you're gonna charge is in the rental agreement. So commercially reasonable manner. That, that's something people, people hear that term in the, in the what? Eh, excuse me, what, what does that mean? So that there are two considerations when you're deciding whether an advertising method is commercially reasonable. The first one is it needs to be a method that at least three independent bidders participate in the sale. And we'll get to a minute what exactly that means. And then the second one, it's a, and this is kind of a mouthful, and we'll also break this down as well. A man, the manner is in conformity with advertising practices among dealers and the type of personal property being sold. Again, that's a real mouthful, but just bear with me for a couple minutes here and we'll break that down for you to you know, give you some ideas of, of what is acceptable and what might not be acceptable. So independent bidder. I, I found this kind of funny when I was reviewing the law. Uh, independent bidder is neither independent nor a bidder. So that's something, let's discuss that. Uh, so Arkansas defines independent bidder differently from other states that have this definition. A lot of times, I think if I were to ask folks, if we did a poll here or something, and I asked you, what does it mean to be an independent bidder? You would probably say it means that those people are separate from the other bidders, meaning a husband and a wife, they're not independent of each other or a, husband, a father and a son, they're not independent, or maybe somebody who's connected to the owner in some way, an employee of the owner, or the spouse of the owner. Those people, you would not perhaps in the normal sense of the word, consider those people to be independent. But the law does not define independent bidder in a way that uh, is meant to be that they have to be independent of each other. They're really not independent in any, any way other than how it's defined in, in the statute. And we'll talk about that in a second. Secondly, the person, the, the quote unquote independent bidder is not even a bidder. So what, what is an independent bidder? An independent bidder, and you can see it down here on this last bullet point, 
independent bidder is anyone who makes an offer in person or online. Okay, that's a that's a bidder. Yeah, that's what we think of as a bidder. Is physically present at the sale. That person may or may not actually bid or views the sale online. Again, that person doesn't actually have to make a bid on the unit to be considered an independent bidder. In fact, none of these three uh, criteria here for what is an independent bidder speak in any way to the person's independence. So yeah, don't get tripped up on that, that terminology. As long as the person is either there and makes an offer in person or online, physically present, I mean, you know, of course, the way you're only the only way you're physically present is if it's an in-person sale or if it's an online sale and they view the online auction. And I know Pete is talking after me uh, a little bit here and Pete can explain exactly what it means uh, to view an auction. Uh, but they they have on a lot of these online auction websites where you can see, OK, there were this number of bids and there were this number of views. As long as you have three views that you have met the requirements of, of the law here. So we now know what an independent bidder is. Oh, I don't know what just happened there. Sorry about that. Um, we now know what an independent bidder is, but there's the second component of what it means to be commercially reasonable. And it's this manner and conformity with advertising practices among dealers and the type of personal property being sold. This is something that is not defined with great specificity in law. So it's ultimately uh, something that is kind of a, a matter of interpretation. So I'll give you my interpretation of it. And I, I think the other lawyers in the industry would probably be, uh, I think, on the same page as, as I am in, in terms of what we're recommending are acceptable and, and maybe not as ideal methods of, of advertising. So what, what I'm suggesting is when you're looking at a manner in conformity with practices for the industry, you don't want to stand out from the crowd. You want to be doing what other operators are doing in the other in, in your state of Arkansas and in the other 26 states across the country that don't require newspaper advertising. It's now, I'm happy to say, with Arkansas actually being the first state to pass their law this year, uh, we now have reached a majority of states that no longer require newspaper advertising of these lean sales. Don't, so don't stand out from the crowd. Do what the other operators are doing in the industry, especially the ones that have had the experience of, of what's going on in other states. So maybe some ways that you don't wanna advertise lean sales. A billboard, you know, may, maybe, maybe not, but I don't think people typically advertise it on billboards. Uh, you know, the, the banner going over the Lake of the Ozarks, no, nope, probably not a good idea. Smoke signals, nope. There's a little dude in the sandwich board, no, not that either. And then uh, if you're if you're watching the Hogs, uh, you know, don't don't uh, you know, don't don't go on their scoreboard. Those are probably ways that are outside of the, you know, the methods that are uh, common in the industry or accepted in the industry. So now we know what, where not to advertise or how not to advertise. So what are some options that you can look at uh, where, you, where you can feel comfortable advertising your lean sales outside of the newspaper? So here are some. Uh, Facebook Marketplace, Facebook. Uh, if you this one here, this is the Cube Smart website. Unless you work for Cube Smart, you're probably not going to advertise on the Cube Smart website. But my point is that you can advertise on the on your own website, and that's what a lot of the larger public companies do. Uh, Cube Smart has this dedicated page. Public Storage has has one similar to this as well. Very good way to to advertise. eBay. Uh, I'll get back to email in a second here. Craigslist, you know, everybody knows what Craigslist is. And then you've got these options down here at the bottom where, where I think most people are gonna go, the online, the online auction companies for, specific to the self-storage industry. 
And uh, I love all the I love the folks at all three of these companies. There are also a variety of other ones in the industry, so I don't mean in any way to limit my comments to these three companies. Um, and you, but there are a lot of a lot of competition in the industry uh, in this area, and a lot of very good good competitors in the industry in this area that have been doing this for many many years. Some of them are storage operators themselves, and they they really understand the industry. and And I'd encourage you uh, to take a look at these companies as as really strong options for advertising your sales online, and then ultimately conducting them online. And then finally, I'll, I'll get back to uh, the email here. This is this is something I I know some of the questions that Shelley had sent to me before we did this uh, call we're asking about whether you could advertise through email. And the answer is yes. Uh, email is, is a pretty common way to advertise to folks. Uh, I would say it's probably if you're still doing your, your auctions in person, it, it makes more sense there than if you're doing them, them online, uh, where you can just do the advertisement on, on the website itself. But uh, if you have a reliable list of folks who consistently show up to your lean sales, you can blast out the notice to those folks and say, on August 28th, 2021, I'm having a lean sale of these units with this content, and here's the time, place, and manner of, of the sale. Uh, show up at 10 o'clock, bids only in cash, got to clear out the space in 24 hours, whatever your, your, your standard type of advertisement would be, go ahead, push that out to your email list. And again, if you get uh, the, the minimum of three quote unquote independent bidders to that auction, uh, you are you have a commercially reasonable sale and a commercially reasonable method of advertising that sale. So uh, quickly here, a couple of examples of advertisements. Uh, you'll see here, I, I kind of, I, I took these out of uh, the newspaper, actually, uh, the, the Democrat Gazette, and, and added a couple little fun elements of my own. But generally, these are what folks had advertised in the newspaper before this bill had passed. You'll see some people just, they advertise the unit numbers, other folks advertise the names of the folks who are having their property auctioned. You really have quite a bit of flexibility in terms of what you're going to put in that advertisement in the state of Arkansas. So it's time, place, and manner is, is what you need to put. So time, place, yeah, you know, those are pretty obvious things. Uh, you know, are you doing it online? You put the website. If you're doing it in person, you put the physical address. You probably put the physical address as well uh, if you're doing it online to for the person to know where to pick it up manner it's you know is it at all are you requiring the person paying cash are you uh requiring them to clear out the space within a certain amount of time those those types of things beyond that you know there are some states that are very specific okay you need to have some sort of an inventory of the contents you need to have the name of the tenant that type of information the state of arkansas doesn't require that it's it's a really very simple and basic type of advertisement that you're going to be doing uh, to comply with the law so with that, that's really all, all I have in terms of my prepared remarks, but I am happy to answer any questions that folks have about this law or really any other legal questions that might be on your mind. I, I do have the good or bad fortune, depending on your perspective of, of uh, occupying two of the most hated jobs in America, a lawyer and a lobbyist. So uh, any questions you have, please throw them out to us. Um, we had one um, come in from Mark just a second ago. Um, does this impact automotive auctions? And if so, how? Yeah, so the automobiles uh, are going to be governed in, an, in a separate part of the law uh, and, and it does not change the process for automobiles uh, that is i don't i am not specifically familiar with how that process works in arkansas but generally it, it does still require certified letters and newspaper advertisements and this this law does not change that this is for non 
non-vehicle type of uh, property, which okay. I think is going to be the, the vast majority of the sales that folks are going to have anyway. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Shelly, but you do have the option in Arkansas of, of towing vehicles, and, and we recommend folks use that option. Um, you know, it, 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 in, my, in my mind, it doesn't typically make sense to sell a vehicle. It's just, it's kind of a cumbersome process and just get rid of that vehicle and, and rent that space to someone who can pay you. Yeah, we um, we worked on that legislation. I think it was about five years ago um, and, and that passed. Um, and uh, if you do want to go through the actual sale of an automobile um, that's laid out in our lean sale handbook that we um, put out, I don't know, maybe the last version we had was the last time some legislation passed, so maybe 2017. Um, but so we can help you with that if you do want to go that route. But we always recommend <laughs> the towing option. Um, Stephanie has asked if um, you can advertise on your Google page. Yeah, definitely. Uh, th that's something, uh, you know, if I, I think kind of generally uh, what I'd say is if you're on a publicly accessible page uh, or somewhere that your bidders go to, that that's a totally appropriate place to to advertise the sale. And again, you you it, you want the three independent bidders to be at the at the sale or uh, submitting bids on submitting bids or views online and and you've satisfied the the advertising requirement. Makes sense. Um, Austin has asked if you were to post on like storage treasures or storage auction stuff um, and they don't have the required number of three views. Um, are we considered not ha having satisfied the ad requirement? I, I'll answer that question uh, with a yes, but, uh, which is, as I tell my kids, really just a way of saying no. Uh, but <laughs> the, you, you have not satisfied the requirement, but you know, I'll, I'll let Pete correct me here you know, when he speaks, but I have, I have never seen a situation where a, an online auction does not get at least three views. Uh, yeah, so it's, that would be extraordinarily rare. If, if it does happen, yeah, you're not in compliance and then you've got to um, you know, re-advertise that sale. Um, but I, I find I'm really hard pressed to think that would happen. I think it's much more likely to happen that you wouldn't attract three bidders to a, to a live auction rather than not getting three views in an online option. And, and that's actually what Lonnie um, with storageauctions.com helped us with as far as our legislation. We were trying to figure out how um, operators knew that they had enough bidders. And so um, on that particular program, um, they can roll out a report if it's ever in question that there were definitely, um, you know, three bidders or um, three views. Um, and yeah. said, like you were saying, there's very rarely any circumstance where there's not three um, happening. So Yeah, I'll jump in real quick if that's okay, Shelly, just to give sure. some co uh, confidence to exactly what Joe said. It is, I can't even think of a time where there, we haven't been able to generate three, at least three independent views, aka bidders in that scenario. So I would just be absolutely shocked if, if anyone else were to experience that. I know Storage Treasures is a, is a good competitor of ours, but another good online auction company in the market. And I'd be very surprised if they weren't generating at least three as well. So um, if you come across that, I would definitely say talk to your vendor, whoever you're using, because that would be an issue. But like Joe said, it's just not going to happen. You know, if you're it, with online auctions and, and the marketing that's done, you're going to, you're going to satisfy that quote unquote commercially reasonable requirement every single time. Yeah. Um, let's see here. I've got one from Alan. Um, he's asking, what is the amount of time that has to pass before you can have the vehicle towed and you will still get your pass to do amount? So let's see. That's uh, 61, 60 or 61 days in the, in the state of Arkansas. I forget each state's a little bit different. Some are 60, some are 61. 
Uh, hang on, I'm looking at it right now. So yeah, if the tenant's in default for at least 60 days, you can have their property towed. Good to know, good, okay. That applies to motor vehicles, trailers, and watercraft. Um, and Jean has asked, um, can you advertise on more than one place, um, like Craigslist and an auction site? Um, Absolutely. Yep, the more the merrier. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I would just say there that the yeah the more the more folks you can attract to the auction, whether it's in person or online, you're increasing the chances of getting that bid higher and, and being able to pay off more of that tenant's debt. So right. absolutely. Um, Tanner's asked in the event that there are three views but no bidders, is the unit considered abandoned? Yeah, that, that's a good question. I, I thought someone might might ask that one. Let me let me take a quick look to see whether you guys specifically deal with that in in Arkansas. So there are some states that specifically I'm not seeing a place where where Arkansas law specifically deals with with that. There are some states that say if you have a commercially reasonable sale and, and there aren't any nobody actually purchases the property, you can dispose of that. But I, I feel comfortable saying uh, whether that language is in Arkansas or not, that, that you can. If you've, you've gone through all of the steps of the process and you have the three views, you have the three independent, quote unquote, independent bidders and, and nobody actually purchases the property, I'm comfortable saying that you can dispose of that property Really, and, and I use the word dispose uh, in, in a kind of broad sense. So I think people might think, well, I'm gonna bring it out to the trash can. Yeah, certainly you can do that. You can also uh, go ahead and go on your Facebook marketplace page if you have one and, and do a sale there or on Craigslist. You can donate to charity, whatever, you know, charity storage, uh, charity storage is a great, great option for those types of situations. You know, assuming it's not just complete trash. Uh, which it might be, but um, but yeah, you've you've got a lot of flexibility in that situation. I would just say, make sure you've fully documented your file. Okay, you know, here was here was the default notice. Here were the other method. Here were the other attempts to communicate with the tenant. Here was the advertisement. Maybe take some photographs of the unit uh, or, or video recording of the unit just to verify what was in there, and then again, dispose of it the way that, that you see fit. Right, okay. We get that question a lot. Exactly what are we supposed to do with things left in the unit that aren't, um, that didn't make, you know, the, basically the person that bought it uh, didn't um, take, so. Yeah, and, um, and, and uh, Shelly, if that's something you're interested in dealing, if you're interested in dealing with that legislatively, we do have some language about that. We're happy to, to work with you on that. Okay, good to know. Um, Tanner is asked, um, does this law allow for us to email out our lien notice as opposed to sending in a certificate of mailing? That is, that is a loaded question. <laughs> yeah, so... This bill doesn't deal with that, but the law already addresses that in Arkansas. Um, and it's gotta be listed specifically in your rental agreement. Is that the way I understand it? Is that correct? Yeah, let me let me actually um, pull up a document here real quick. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here just for a second, but I'm going to I'm going to pull up a document and then start sharing my screen again where we just go through a one page or two page summary of the Arkansas lien law. And I'm happy to provide this to to any of your members, Shelly, or, or provide it to you to provide to your members. Yeah, that'd be great. We can add it to our it'll answer that that question exactly. Um, so here we go. All right, so let me share my screen here again. And so you'll see here, this actually wasn't, uh, I haven't updated this yet for the uh, advertising component, but the, but the email part is addressed right here. 
And so you can send lien notices by email, but only if the occupant provides an email address and gives permission to the operator to use that email address as legal, notif legal notification for the occupant's last known address. So you're absolutely right, Shelley, that it, it needs to be in, in the rental agreement. And I would say, uh, use this magic language here from the statute that the that the occupant is giving permission to the operator to use the email address as legal notification. Right, right, right. Um, okay, so I think um, Wendy's asking how we get the new handbook. So there's not exactly a new handbook yet. Um, so we're uh, we have the the old handbook that was put out in two thousand. Um, 2017, and I will be adding um, this into that book, and so then we'll call it the new book, but that is um, not quite ready yet, and, and we can put in, um, if Joe will let us do that, um, we can add this and then also the, um, the new law, um, and that's also available on our website under the member downloads, which um, any um, active member with the ARSSA has access to um, any time. So um, I guess, Pete, do you want to jump in real quick and kind of um, talk about storageauctions.com for a few minutes? Um, just answer some maybe common questions. Um, if anyone would like to ask Pete some questions on, um, on the chat or the Q&A, please send those um, along. And um, I asked Pete specifically today to join us because I get a lot of um, questions from members about just they don't know how to make the transition from doing a live auction to a lien sale. And so we're trying to put all of the, the language in the legislation and the, the new law and this new way of doing auctions so that it's just easier on our members um, and they're more protected and we've got everything just lined out and there's just no, no open questions. So um, Pete, I'll go ahead and let you take it from here. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you for having me. I uh, always enjoy any opportunity to, to be involved with Arkansas as well as anywhere Joe is, you know, good stuff's coming too. So um, yeah, yeah. as far as, uh, you know, to hit on a lot of the great points that Joe and, and Shelly and everybody's worked really hard to accomplish for the state's lien laws, um, now that they're into effect, of course, you want to make sure you're taking advantage of them and and getting the most out of them. Uh, one thing that I wanted to uh, just kind of tell you guys listening in about storageauctions.com really quickly is we have something called the timeline guarantee. Whereas um, this is a great example because with laws changing or maybe you're thinking about shifting from live to online, you wanna make sure you're compliant. I mean, if you're not having a legally compliant lien sale, you know, you're, you're setting yourself up for some potential real headaches there. And what our software provides um, is the ability to stay in compliance. So uh, what our software does, if you do make the jump to us and to online auctions, we'll make sure that you're within your proper timeframes on um, the letters, those delinquency letters that you're needing to send out, the advertisements that I know has been a topic for today as well, uh, making sure the proper time frame between all of these steps are done in order to have that legal sale. So Think of it kind of as your right-hand man to keeping you compliant. Our software is built in to just automatically fact check it for you. And then um, I love it earlier when Joe, you know, ripped up the newspaper, said, you know, you don't need it anymore. He's so, he's so correct. And, and we love that. We actually have a section on our website called the legal notices section. And it's an area where you can post your advertisements for free now. So you don't have to pay the newspaper anymore, which is great. Um, so if you if you do want to make that shift to online and you want to just have that all in one place where you can post your ads and your auctions for the same in the same location, we do have that spot for you. And uh, one of the beauties of online auction is is you are going to be able to satisfy that commercially reasonable sale, finding those three independent bidders. And if you can't, if you got a vendor that can't, you know, or if it's us, you need to you need to come kicking and screaming at us anyways, but uh, I feel very confident tell you, telling you that that shouldn't be the case um, with online auctions, satisfying that requirement. And now, um, you know, uh, along with us and others, we're trying to provide tools to you guys to, to help you keep you compliant, drive great results for you. Um, and, you know, we're going to keep growing in Arkansas, providing a, a platform to you guys to, 
to hopefully enjoy. And if you ever have any questions, you can reach me directly. It's just Pete at storageauctions.com. You can reach out to store. You can reach our us. You know, we got a phone line. I'm in the office right now. Any one of us will answer. And um, yeah, just appreciate the time and uh, great to meet you guys and happy to help. Yeah, thanks, Pete. Um, you guys really helped us out um, when we were working on this legislation. Um, a lot of legislators had questions. They were just trying to understand, um, you know, our purpose in doing this and, um, and you know, how, how this is going to work out as far as, you know, what it's going to do to the industry and the state. And um, they're looking at, you know, protecting the tenants mm -hmm. as well as we were. Um, sure. Anyway, so yeah, Lonnie helped us out a lot with that, um, with just the wording and kind of working through legislators' questions. And so we really appreciate your help on that. Um, we had one more question come in um, and it says, I'm assuming on a sale of a default unit, we still have to retain the personal belongings for five years. Is, I don't think that's still the case. Is that, am I wrong in saying that? So make sure I, I hear the question correctly. If we, so you have the legal sale and you're, are we talking about if there are specific contents in the unit um, that would be like an urn, you know, uh, thing, you know, things outside of your, just your typical boxes, mattresses, you know, things that uh, would be in a typical sale. Are we talking about like those very, very personal items. I think that's what we're, I think that's what he's referring to. Um, we do have a, a law that, that um, protects owners and operators um, as far as like personal information. So if you find something with a social security number on it or something like that, um, we can get you that specific bill. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, he said social security numbers, pictures, um, things like that. So, Yeah. What? Yeah, if that's been a requirement, I would imagine it's still the same. I don't think uh, it, I didn't hear it today, and I imagine it'd probably be something that that Joe or anyone would have mentioned. So I would I would say conservatively still follow that practice um, unless you specifically heard that that changed. I'm almost positive that it, it has changed. Joe, do you know about that one? Yeah, there, there's not a five year requirement, and you're absolutely right, Shelley. That there is there is the law or the the part of the law. I think really specific to Arkansas, maybe a couple other states have something similar where it's, it's, if it's personal information, you can't sell it and then you ultimately need to uh, dispose of it if you can't track down the tenant. Yeah, I'll try to, I'll try to find that specific. I think it was uh, House Bill 1585, but... Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and link to the to that part of the law. Shelly, I've got it where I can uh, pull it off of our website. Yeah, and it's uh, section 18.16.4.12. That I'll, I'll just go ahead and put it down in the chat here. Okay, great. I did see another question come in, the not in the Q&A, but in, in the chat about uh, amending a rental agreement. Okay, I missed that one. Thanks for grabbing it. Okay. I don't have that one. Okay. Oh yeah, there are, are a few more that came in. Um, yeah, if you want to answer that one, that would be great. Sure. So let me hang on. I just send this. Uh, so that's the law right there, and, and the the part about keeping or how you dispose of personal information is at the end of the law. Uh, so the the question from Tanner was, if you're unsure if your old rental agreement address, it, address the email address for legal notification, how do you recommend informing tenants about this? Is this something that, that needs to be signed by the tenant or can this be added as an addendum on an invoice for a future effective date? So I think what, what Tanner's referring to, that's actually uh, typically how you would do these things when you're amending a rental agreement, unless you're doing a real full scale change you know, of the rental agreement, you can do it as an addendum and just notify the tenant and say, Hey, we changed the rental agreement. And now, uh, you know, now if you stay here, you're bound by that rental agreement, even if you don't sign a brand new full rental agreement or even sign that addendum. So that's, that's the typical scenario. 
this email uh, item or issue is, is different from that. And it's different from that because it requires the tenant to actually take some action. So you're going to have to get the tenant to provide you first off with their email address. And then secondly, you're going to need to get them to directly consent to that email address being the address for legal notification. I, you know, th there might be some lawyers that take a different approach and would say, well, you can just do that through an addendum. I, I wouldn't do it that way. I, I think you want specific consent from the tenant because you're changing how they're going to uh, get legal notices if they default and if they default and don't respond, it's a pretty serious, it can be a pretty serious situation for you and them if the property sold. So I, I would specifically get their consent and, and what I would recommend doing is uh, sending those out through a service like a DocuSign or another um, an, another electronic signature service. You don't, ne you don't need to get wet signatures on all of these. And the on, the online or the electronic options are uh, you know typically much better for getting responses. Um, let's see. Dan asked where we can get that document that you were showing, so we'll get that out to um, to everybody later today or, or on Monday. Um, Tanner has asked if you are unsure if. Oh wait, I think we just yeah you just addressed that. Never mind. Um, I think that's it. Does anybody else see any more questions come in? I'm gonna make sure. So I, I see a question here from, from Betty in the Q&A about the personal information. Yeah, so are we supposed to go through units and get out the personal information? Yeah, you know, that, that's, a, that's a great question, Betty. I think there are a couple different ways to deal with that. And the, the short answer to your question is no. Uh, you wouldn't typically go rifling through a storage unit and, and figure out, okay, is there a social security card somewhere buried in, in, in this moldy old couch or, or stuck in a mattress somewhere? You, you don't need to do that. But let, let's just say, for example, you know the unit is rented by a, a doctor's office or you open up the unit to inventory it when you're gonna put it on, on Pete's website for a sale. And you see you know, tax, you see on, you know, in Sharpie tax documents, 1999 to, to 2019, you know, that, that's gonna give you a belief that there's probably something in there that you shouldn't sell. And what the law says is you need, if you have a reasonable belief that the unit or the space contains personal information of clients, customers, or others with whom the document does business, you need to, you need to go through a certain process from there. Technically, it's not actually the, the tenant's property that you're seeking to protect. So if the tenant's dumb enough to put their social security card in, in the storage unit, it's kind of on them. But I, I, you know, I, I would say don't don't sell that stuff if you know it's there. But it's really driving at the idea of a business putting something into a storage unit without the consent of their clients, and then that property getting sold and potentially misused. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, does anybody else see any questions come through? I don't think I'm missing any. Okay. Um, I, think I think we're good. I think we are good. Um, okay. <laughs> well, we will go ahead and wrap this up. Um, so a lot of information in 45 minutes. So um, again, we uh, really appreciate Joe and Pete joining us so that we can um, get this information out to our members and thank you for your support while we worked on this legislation. Um, I will get Joe's PowerPoint and the contact information for storageauctions.com out to everyone, as well as the law um, going over the disposal of personal information. Um, I think that is it. We'll, the ARS will say we'll let everyone know when we've got that lien sale book updated. Um, it'll most likely just be a little uh, addendum we'll add in there or um, just a new section. And anybody has any questions if they didn't get to um,
today or if any if you think of any going forward just please send those over to me at terrace at arssa.org so um anyway thanks again guys i hope um we can meet in person next year and um get back on track with our our live shows so um again thanks everyone for your help have a good weekend Bye bye